Welcome everybody, here's your strategy wolf and welcome back to Strategic Command American Civil War and our second turn versus Alkanai Destroyer in the rematch. We are playing the Union. If you haven't seen the first episode, yeah, go check it out and also my recap of the last match and maybe the yeah, four, the prelude, let's say. And yeah, before we go straight in the game, if you haven't yet, please leave me a like and a subscription uh, so you won't miss the future episodes. And of course, this is what keeps on motivating me and gets this channel going. So it would be lovely if you support me like this. And yeah, I hope you enjoy the content. So let's get in and start to have, to have a look at the review together. Okay. <laughs> That's basically it. <laughs> so nothing to see, just some uh, in a fog of war, some movements, some investments made by the enemy. Um, yeah. We are in turn two, basically, so of course nothing really big happens right now. Great Britain extends belligerent status to the Confederacy in response to the blockade. All right. Mr. President, the ultimate measure of victory will be our ability to bring the southern states back into the Union. Regaining control of each state capital throughout the South will reduce the perceived legitimacy of the rebel government in the eyes of the people, as well as boosting support for our war effort. Each state capital has been marked on our map with a blue star and will provide 25 fighting spirit points to each other turn. Should we fail to regain control of the southern state capital's war weariness will reduce our fighting spirit up to 400 points per turn. Uh, capture the market state capitals throughout the south. Yeah, that's what we're going to tr uh, yeah, trying to do, <laughs> Mr. President. The capture of New Orleans, the largest city in the south, and the gateway to the Mississippi River would significantly improve our chances of defeating the Southern Rebellion. To accomplish this, some of our commanders are proposing that we send an amphibious force escorted by river gunboats up the river to occupy the city. While our ghostly gunboats are capable of sailing into the Mississippi directly from the Gulf of Mexico, a greater logistical effort will be required to deploy more powerful river craft, particularly river ironclads, in the southern Mississippi. Should you wish to send such warships in the, to the river, the Navy asks that you move them to the marked hex near New York. The Navy will then automatically arrange for larger ships to escort the river boats to the, south of, uh, the mouth of the Mississippi. All right, those are these hexes over here. Um, I mentioned them already last time. Um, I know how it works. It's the good things I have tested in single player once. So uh, yeah, these mechanics will be explained if I use them. The city of New Orleans is extremely vulnerable to a campaign up the Mississippi River. Situated merely a few feet above sea level, the city relies on a system of levees and dikes to protect it from floodwaters. In the event that our gunboats are able to sail up the river to the marked location at the city's edge, these defenses would be within range of our guns. While our analysts are still determining the likely effects of their destruction, it is likely that flooding New Orleans would have a catastrophic effort upon the strength of the city's garrison. Unfortunately, the effect of such an attack would only be temporary, and we did not then move to quickly occupy the city, the rebels will surely reinforce the garrisons. Recommendation, do not bombard the levels of levees of New Orleans unless you have sufficient amphibious transport within range to occupy New Orleans. Um, yeah, you will be offered a decision event at the beginning on the first turn in which a Union warship occupies hex 96128. Uh, yeah, and this is this very hex down here. So, yeah, in case we send a ship here, those, I think also these ones, I mean, this, these, these ports we can take, take out anyways also by ships. Yeah, we all shall see how this commences even or especially if we even start a Mississippi landing or campaign or whatsoever. Interesting. All right, everybody. Before we get into it, I'll give you a quick overview, but yeah, nothing happened. So it's basically how we left it last turn. Um, yeah, and I will take some uh, notes for myself as you used to from maybe for my first series and i'll um, be right back <laughs> to perform my my actions uh, see you in a second all right everybody we're back and as you used to from the last um, campaign i'm going to structure it mostly that we start going from west to east so we have the most exciting front at the end so let's start off in colorado last turn we were talking about how we use this regiment if i shall move it down already to uh, new mexico i will transfer it now i think here to the um, western here to oklahoma to support a little bit in case we need this regiment there will be reinforcements anyways uh, incoming and more solid ones than a regiment so in case we realize we really need down yeah we can always we don't need reinforcements over here we can bring them back so yeah this is for the moment which takes us already here to the missouri um front lines and 
gladly or how luckily this Fort Washita wasn't taken. So I will definitely, we've got 917 MPP, so pretty, uh, yeah smooth since we can spend 15 for refreshing this regiment to full strength leaves us 900 like a pretty nice number because yeah you know most uh investments in in research or production have pretty like at, at least in the beginning like 250 or 300 costs so this is nice to calculate so these guys hold the position down here um yeah you are locked up anyways in the fort until oklahoma or the yeah the indian natives join in uh, down here, let's quickly take, we. this was the most important task to take here, the uh, mine. So let's quickly also take Carthage just to get the supply in. And since we, if we expect any, let's say, um, counterattack still coming from this side. So I think I'll occupy for the moment Joplin. So yeah, I don't know. Of course, if he has more substantial attacks are coming in. There's also not huge armies of the CSA around, but probably stronger troops in a little bit town. So it's the, the main target is just to keep this mine as long as possible in our hands, refusing the enemy the income. All right, over here, let's... I think I'm always eager to take as many towns um, as possible, since they also give some MPP and fighting spirit. So let's take Osceola and then we move southwards. Also, it just uh, yeah, cuts the lines in, when they, uh, in case they wanted to make use of the situation or like move troops up, actually, which I doubt, but nevertheless. And same here. Um, I mean, Fort Davidson, uh, you remember last time I had it, it's pretty uh, nicely defendable. Um, I will use my, I think, my calf here to scout if it's occupied or not. And if it's not, I might take it uh, quickly. But let's first do the uh, home homework up here. Here I want to take the port of St. Joseph. Down here, let's... Yeah, I mean, taking these cities, yeah. Slowly. When will Siri surrenders, all these towns uh, sur surrender anyways, but you yeah, know, it's still... Yeah, here taking these two and getting the half closer. So we have some reconnaissance over here, but yeah, we don't really. All right, um, I think I'll... How far can you go here to Herman? I think I'll use this cap to scout a little bit down here and get an overview of the situation. And I see Fort Davidson is actually not defended at the moment. So I think I take it. Yeah, it's a cure rather before they get out a massive fortification down here. So this is quite nice. How about St. Davis over here? Uh, St. Genève, I mean. Okay, let's do the others maybe first, you guys. Uh, we need you also somebody to scout up here. So probably just, just, just a state guard in here. I kind of risk to go already here. All right. Yeah, the HQ can only move as fast as it can go. The brigades I want as far up as possible so we can attack Jefferson as quickly as possible. Should we force march them up already? Maybe actually. And you guys. Um, staying in Fort Davidson, scouting over here, going back to... I'm a little bit indecisive. Okay, you guys move already up. So we can start the siege next turn. Here. Yeah, somebody has to force march also over here to same front. All right. Okay, let's actually keep Fort Davidson. So it is occupied uh, for the next turn. And you guys can... Yeah, the regiment here can maybe protect the HQ from any surprising... Counterattacks. Whilst these guys... I also moved them up. Like the the faster we have the troops here, it's we're gonna be. Uh, or do I need some? And then there could be like a calf division or something. To be honest, let's just in case not force march them this turn, so you can just secure the the HQ for one more turn. And then we shall see how it looks like the next one. Yeah, I think this is a good idea over here. So we're basically done here in the Oklahoma at the Oklahoma front. Here, uh, yeah, we keep the brigade down in uh, Cairo in. Illinois. 
So down here is nothing to do. You're already on convoy mode. Yep. The frigate down here. Let's put it in convoy mode and slowly move them up. So we can attack first convoys if they start um, yeah, deploying. And then we've got the main front over here. Where we uh, also just have basically... Uh, where, sorry guys. Now uh, we're here in Washington. Um, where I kind of... Let's use this train for scouting and check out the Harpers Ferry situation. Not occupied yet, but we can't reach it. That's unfortunate and the uh, train can't really get there in one turn. Which is sub suboptimal, but okay. And I think I'll just keep it here, maybe... Yeah, actually, it's a good positioning, I would say. And then I think Carpus, I, I feel like there's going to be reinforcement next turn, but I really would like to take it since this is kind of a key position. We've got one brigade to deploy, probably for Washington itself. And it's also kind of recommendable to take, um, yeah, here, Alexandria. It's a very good defensive position and the harbor of Washington. So, yeah, I feel like... There's no doubt doing it. The question is just how we deploy our troops. I would, we can move these guys, for example, over here to have something that could be could attack Harpers Ferry next turn already. And or we just like send one to the forest here, one behind the line. I doubt I don't know if they have the mobility to sur surround us fully. You know. And from here, I think they don't have the range to really attack Harpers Ferry. This is also a very sweet spot to defend. We can only set up this one brigade, which will go to Washington. Well, well, well. Um. <laughs> well, we can... Okay, let's do it a little bit aggressive but only for the beginning and let's have them here they occupy frederick you guys you shouldn't be scouted by the enemy from from harper ferry so if the enemy moves up they get into a little bit of an ambush which is nice and here i'll move up to these forests while setting up a new unit here in washington of course you know they if if they have a calf or something that's basically what happened for me last term they if they would be up here already they could surround us but this requires a lot of yeah, ambitious attack in the beginning I, I i don't know if the enemy is going to attack so aggressively so i rather decided for this more flexible opening <laughs> if you want to call it that so yeah the, we have the chance of going to harvest ferry in case we need to uh, and, and this is kind of of course not against strong forces but yeah, this could be helpful. All right, then we've got these um, frigates down here, and I'd love to, yeah, definitely take one to for the moment here to Norfolk, basically, and not to Port Monroe. No worries, they will, and also block off here the Potomac River entry. I mean, they can see us here, but also the navy of the enemy is quite limited at the moment. And as long as the convoys don't open up, I'm happy to have just these two frigates blocking basically the entrance here to the sea. Yeah, I think this is kind of important. Um, so we set up already one brigade and we've got one more brigade here in uh, basically in Massachusetts. So the Minnesota frigate. Maybe we'll send this one down to the Gulf of Mexico also to attack. Basically later we need the frigates mainly to um, con for convoy raiding. But all right. So let's quickly have an overview if we did everything or we forgot something. But I feel like this looks pretty fine. We don't have any further units to move. Nope, down here Caribbean, we don't have anything at the moment. I did make a go for a check because now we're coming to a research and production segment. And yeah, I can show you guys the enemy hasn't invested in any diplomacy. So basically we can... Uh, this is mine. Yemeni oh, went hard on research last time where we, we, we decided rather to buy a, a unit. And then again invested this time. No in, uh, diplomacy spend. Enemy also bought, bought some units this turn. 320 MPP. I wonder what this is actually is. It looks like a combination or spend units probably also refreshing, refreshing up some units. All right. Anyways, that leaves me to the situation so I don't feel like I need to invest into in Kentucky. 
as long as the enemy does not, I feel like I don't have to. So for this reason, I go I can go to research this time and I'll start pretty yeah, standard, I'd say. Let's go one time, one shit for 250 infantry equipment and one shit early on in production. Uh, yeah, so we've got two key technologies already started. You see we have got two chits already, uh, default-wise in logistics and two in industrial, so we can't do anything here. Spying one, I'd like to go also in here. Yeah, there's a lot of stuff I would like to start, but I feel like production uh, makes as much sense, like the earlier the better. Infantry is also key. And yeah, here the tactics, the navy stuff. We will keep on investing the next turns, don't you worry. But um, I don't want to go fully on in research right now. And with the same argumentation as last turn where I bought like the brigade for 200, I'm going to buy two more brigades because they are quickly built. And now in the beginning where everything is kind of empty, I'm happy to have a couple of units out to yeah, have some initiative out there. And we'll get them already like this is probably one we ordered last turn so in june the next turn probably and also here we've oh or is this the one that we ordered last turn yeah anyways we have as you see just some event troops of course incoming but in the next turns not that much so this is good to have quick re brigade reinforcements all right and that's already so much about the the first uh, the second turn uh let's let's finish uh, finish it together and see if there's any more events for us yes there is um secretary for simon cameron port monroe on the tip of virginia peninsula is the only remaining part of virginia that has not fallen under rebel control as it is strategically located to overlook both the james river and the chesapeake bay we must ensure that we maintain control of this valuable asset to reinforce port monroe i propose that we send major general benjamin butler and a brigade of volunteers to the fort where this free forces will be organized as the department of virginia Sending General Butler to Fort Monroe will cost 25 MPPs and if you do not wish to reinforce Fort Monroe, these units will instead deploy in Washington DC. Do you wish to send General Butler to Fort Monroe? And I already mentioned it in the intro, I feel like this is kind of a no-brainer to me. Let's have a look at the notes. Fort Monroe will likely come under attack from Confederate forces, so you are strongly unencouraged to say yes to this decision. If you say no, it is advised that you manually send at least one unit to reinforce the fort. Exactly, and I feel like so cheap. 25, we get a brigade and a HQ over there, and this is makes it almost impenetrable in the beginning of the game for the enemy. So, and as you see, Fort Monroe would later be used as a staging point for the 1862 Peninsula campaign. It can even be used uh, for these things. So, yeah, we definitely sent them there, and there we go. Our reinforcements. So now the frigate also makes a little bit more sense. These guys march over there. The Confederates celebrate the secession of Arkansas. Okay, this means basically now we can get some pressure from down here as well. Uh, North Carolina seeds. All right. Okay, now there, Virginia hasn't even seeded, I guess, or had probably. Uh, George McSellen takes command of the Department of Ohio, so we're getting the McSellen and the troops to move into Western Virginia next turn. Nice to see. Kentucky issues a declaration of neutrality. I think this is the standard move. Let me know if it's differently and it should maybe diplomatically in West. And the Mexican bandit Juan Cortina launches an unsuccessful incursion into Confederate-held Confederate Texas. And that's it. We're getting some income. Good to see. Um, I feel like I got already a little bit more maybe from taking this mine down there in Illinois, but maybe it's just my thinking. Anyways, I'm already like, hyped for the next turn. Can't wait until this uh, war unfolds even more. So I hope, so hope, hope so are you. Um, don't miss the upcoming episodes. Once again, please leave me a like and subscription so you won't end, so you support me and make me happy. Thank you very much, and then just see you next time with the next episode. Bye. Your strategy wolf.